So I'll be showing you my Cinema 4D to Unreal Engine 5 workflow. I've been really enjoying this lately uh, with Cinema 4D. I love it because, you know, the animation capabilities with the cloner, the effectors, the MoGraph, fields, dynamic simulations, all of that stuff, the modeling tools. I've just been loving Cinema 4D as of late. And now with the updated Cineware plugins with Datasmith and Unreal Engine 5, it's been a lot more stable and you have the ability to, you know, model up your scene non-destructively, export it out to Unreal, and then re-import and update that model in real, like almost in real time with just the click of a button. Um, and a lot of the scenes you've seen on this channel have been using this workflow, so I'm really keen to show it to you guys. Uh, Unreal has been amazing with Lumen, ray traced uh, reflections and real-time ray tracing. Nanite can handle high poly stuff really well. Uh, so let's jump in and we'll start with Cinema 4D. Okay, so this is my scene. Uh, as you can see, I have everything pretty well organized. I got everything named. They're in their own nulls, which kind of act as layers. Uh, I have secondary objects. I don't really need that, but that's fine. You'll notice I don't have any lights in this scene because obviously I do all of that in Unreal. Uh, I also, I do have some material, like some default materials in, but that also gets all handled in Unreal. Although, uh, if you do have selection sets, so mater material IDs on an object, uh, make sure you have materials assigned to each selection and then that will now come through into Unreal as well. So just keep that in mind. Um, you'll notice my cloner is still, you know, like not baked, like it's still working. I can still manipulate it. Uh, same with this. You know, everything has not been baked down because luckily Cineware takes care of all of that. Uh, and you might be wondering, what is Cineware? So Cineware is a, if I go up to here, file, see, save projects for Cineware. Uh, this is the file that we import into Unreal Engine using their Datasmith importer. So Cineware automatically bakes everything down for you, which means in your file, you can keep everything as is. And then if you need to update something, maybe you got to change the amount of clones or the spacing, you can do that and then re-export into Cineware and then update that in Unreal. So it's a really awesome non-destructive workflow. Uh, another thing, you'll see I have this layer down here called backup. I just keep some like extra geometry in there that I don't want to delete. Uh, if it is hidden from the renderer and the viewport, so if both these dots are red, it will not be imported or exported out of Cinema 4D. Uh, however, if it's just like uh, the viewport uh, hidden, I don't know what the word is. <laughs> if it's hidden from the viewport, like these cameras, it still will be exported out. So just keep that in mind. Uh, another thing that's important, if I go to this UV edit mode and I'll click on, I'll click on the seat or something, uh, UVs are important. So make sure you kind of have your tags or your UVW tags in there. Um, you can use the automatic wrapper, which is what I do for a lot of the things. So for example, you'll see something like this. So the platform here, you just do the automatic wrapping, choose whatever preset you want, and then that's done. So that way your materials will tile really nicely and you don't need to worry about stretching. Um, another project setting that we need to check is if you hit Control and D on your keyboard to bring up the project settings and then go to Cineware, make sure you have Polygon Cache and Animation Cache checked. Uh, materials we don't need to worry about because we're not bringing any of that over anyway. Um, you'll also notice something I forgot to mention is I don't really have any keyframes for this cloner, like I said. Um, the ball, I, I think, is animated. Let me check. Oh, it's animated along a spline. So that also comes over. I don't need to bake them in. So another advantage of using this workflow. So you'll see it just plays, if I go to the start, yep, it just plays like that. All the effectors get used correctly. You don't need to bake any of that down and it's just really uh, seamless, I feel. Some limitations of this, uh, it only supports 
position scale and rotation animation. So if you have soft bodies, you're going to have to bake that out uh, and export as an Alembic file. Um, if you have any vertex animations, that won't really work. Like vertex map um, tags and things have not really worked in my experience. So you will need to make sure you have UV set up properly and custom materials or do that all in Unreal. Uh, what else? Dynamic simulations. Rigid body simulations actually do work as long as you bake them down into keyframes, I find, or cache them out. Uh, I just like baking them into keyframes because sometimes I get, a, I get like jumps in the simulation and I export that over. But in my emissive, in the cup, in my emissive tutorial where I had these like orange orbs rotating in a cup, that was a rigid body simulation and that came over really well. So position, scale and rotation are the three attributes that can be exported out without any issues that I've had in my experience. So once you are ready to export, you just go to file, save project for Cineware, call it whatever you want, and that's it. Okay, so now we're in Unreal Engine 5. First thing you want to do is go to edit plugins, type in Cineware. Make sure you have your Cineware enabled and you'll see you need 2023 installed of Cinema 4D because we are using Unreal 5.1. Uh, if you have an older version of Unreal, I think it should support earlier versions of Cinema 4D, so just keep that in mind. Uh, you'll also need to restart your editor if it does, uh, if it's not already enabled. Next, go to this button right here, find Datasmith File Import, choose your scene, go to Geometry or wherever you want to save it and hit OK. In this dialog box, I just leave everything as default. So these are my settings. Uh, make sure you have cameras, animations, obviously not lights for us. Materials and textures we actually don't need. And then geometry. And then hit import. Okay, so now our scene has been imported. Obviously we can't see anything because we have no light. So I'm just going to go to unlit mode. And here we go. All our geometries in and all our naming conventions and layers have stayed the same. So this is super good. In your folder that you um, imported into, you'll notice the geometries. Uh, this is why I mentioned the instancing works really well. So you'll see I have this cube. It just uses one static mesh that it then instances a million times or however many, clo however many clones you have. So I have like 5,000 but it doesn't import 5,000 cubes, it only imports one. So really good on efficiency there. Uh, and then if I go back one and go to animations, this is, if it loads, this is our, um, all our animations baked into keyframes. So if I go here, or let me actually add in a light just so we can see something. Now you will notice if I hit play, you can see all our geometry is animated and works. Obviously it's at a bit of a low frame rate because I'm recording and I have a heavier scene, but when you render out uh, on a sequence, obviously you can choose what FPS you want. And if you go to perspective here, you have all your cameras, you'll notice it's super dark. And that is because for some reason it sets the exposure on all your cameras when you bring them in. So what you want to do is select all your cameras like I have here, type in expo for exposure and just hit this default. And now your all your exposure should be set. And if I go back to here, I think I can just go back to regular lighting. Now you'll notice, oh, wrong camera, uh, camera two. Now we have what we had in cinema, we now have that in Unreal. So a quick tip I have with dealing with these sequences, you can see if you have a cloner, you'll have a bunch of tracks. What I like to do is I'll go to my own sequencer, create a new level sequence, call it underscore test or whatever you wanna call it. Jump in, you can now add your camera. So camera cut track, I'm in camera two. And then what you can do is reference the imported sequence we just had. So if you go to track, 
sub sequences track and then find it what was it oh yeah scene three now we have our animation running in a new sequence and you don't have all those tracks you need to worry about and you can see it also runs a lot smoother so definitely take advantage of this it's cutting at the wrong place because i had 300 frames i think you'll notice 300 cool and now we have our full animation in a sequence and it looks really clean the next thing i want to show you is if you wanted to update a model what would you do so all you've got to do is go to your cinema which i closed but you just make a change export it out as a cineware again you can replace it if you want and then go to your data smith scene not the cineware asset data smith right click and you can either re-import if you did an overwrite or you can re-import with a new file which is really good for version control uh, and you might have multiple levels with different scenes so you don't want to overwrite this one you just create a new scene and put and test your new export in that one uh, if that made sense so really really simple workflow right click and then re-import now the last thing i want to show you is add in filters into your scenes that way you don't need to jump into things all the time so say you're in geometry and you have a bunch of scenes and you're not sure which one uh, just go to a filter and you can add you know whichever ones you want i've added these so then you can just go data smith scene right click re-import uncheck that maybe you want to quickly go to your level sequence so click level sequence there we go super easy to find that static meshes as well textures if you imported any uh, and it's just a really uh, handy tool for like saving time and a bunch of clicks. So definitely take advantage of filters. So that's it for your Unreal Engine setup. Uh, now you know how to export out of cinema, how to import into Unreal and how to update that model. You can now begin lighting your scene, uh, adding materials and art directing whatever you want. If you want a breakdown of this scene, just let me know in the comments uh, and I'll happily make a video on that. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, all the positive feedback on my recent videos has been super motivating, so definitely keep them coming. Uh, and all you know, constructive criticism is welcome too. Uh, I'm also going to be making some Cinema 4D tutorials using Octane and Redshift, and just exploring a few other animation techniques as well as scene breakdowns. So look forward to those. Uh, thanks so much again, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.